What's up, guys? Welcome to the fifth episode of the Merging Minds podcast. And today we're going to be having a conversation with Ian, who's a spiritual median. So it's going to be super interesting. I mean, we're going to find out what is a spiritual meeting? How does a spiritual meeting work? Is it even safe? When would you use a spiritual meeting? And what happens after death? And all different types of questions. Um, it's all about the connection between him and the spiritual realm and the spirits within it and his communication with it. So we're going to go dive deep into that. So let's go. Let's go learn. Let's go find out. Let's go explore his mind. Yeah. How you doing? You all right? I'm doing well. Yeah. How are you? Yeah. Cool and groovy. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. How's business and everything? up and down you know it's um with mediumship particularly it, it's one of those things where there's all sorts out there at the moment doing their online thing yeah so um yeah i just uh, i'm gonna sort of just expand and do some things and some different things and my um i suppose my life coaching i really dislike the word life coach yeah uh, i would rather i'd rather call it like a soul awakening yeah, uh, I like I like that too. I got certified in life coaching, and I try to like not avoid using that that word too. Yeah, because everybody's a life coach, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, I I had a one of these business opportunities that comes across your way, and I looked into it, and they're sort of they're trying to spin it on the material side of life. Look at all of this. This is what manifestation is, and they're selling a course to. Um, so learn how to do this and it's it's just fundamentally flawed if you don't understand energy and the fact that you're vibrating energy and you've you've got to guide that to allow align and become at one with dot 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 so yeah it it, it, it goes against the grain because it, it's almost like saying i can empower you no it doesn't does it you you only you can empower you right but we we can kind of we can put the fizz in you to get you going. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. why I call myself a way guide. And I always say it's on your, on your way back to yourself. By nature, you're off path. Yeah. Wow. So is that, um, that's the goal of what you're doing. And you're just kind of using being a medium to help people come back to their, themselves. <laughs> yeah, I, I do do that because, it, you know, well, I mean, we're all source energy. And, um, you, you know, you ultimately we're all guided and we're all guided from the same thing it's it's like a lot of mediums say i can't take credit for tonight you know i um it's all this and that's not right either because it is a it is a bit of a the meat bag but it is a bit the you um you know your higher self in it as well because without that it, it wouldn't obviously go anywhere it might go as blocks of thought but whether people were savvy enough to either awaken to that acknowledge it or even have the capacity to increase their bandwidth to receive a greater frequency. Yeah, right. That's a, that's a very different thing. So if you kind of follow the Esther Hicks, I'm sorry, I rephrase that, the Abraham and Esther yeah. Hicks side of um, things and that whole channel guidance, that, that's, a, that's a completely different place. Yeah. I see. So what, what exactly is a spiritual medium? And what is a spiritual medium? Well, I've changed it because I think going more international now, I've called, I'm calling myself a psychic a medium. Okay. Because people, people attach to the psychic. Um, what, basically what I'm saying is, is I, I'm, truly, um, I'm truly being the best I can to expand my senses so that I'm increasing my bandwidth to um, come one step closer so that I'm able to receive what you send to me to uh in in such an extent that the level of information that i get is um so much greater than say your average medium that's not for me to say i'm better than anybody else but the trick isn't about you saying what you are and telling everyone what you can do it, it's actually kind of you know the devil's in the detail as they say it's, it's prove it so you have to become in alignment with it to truly receive the magic that makes it more incredible it's already incredible, but it, it becomes it becomes more incredible oh wow interesting so how did you get into it and like where did you uh, where you realize your gift well, well this is the thing you know this was through um i suppose i would say my ultimate awakening moment was through a a trauma 
So in my case, the, the final straw was almost a relationship breakup, which, uh-huh. in, which involved my, my son and understanding that a lot of things that I'd experienced along the way to date that actually made a lot of sense. So for example, the imaginary friend as I kid that went beyond just either an alter ego perspective or thought pattern or suggestion, because that's equally true, being aware of what the mind is doing and your identity with it, rather than necessarily receiving a communication. But then I had um, things like, I remember just sort of seeing an old lady at the foot of my bed and talking to people and having really, really strong intuition. And two weeks ago, um, I suppose, I don't do predictions either. I either get told something or shown something, but I, the little I, um, not even my higher self, the unconscious Ian almost, or the consciously unconscious, um, you know, doesn't know. So um, we've got a, a lifelong friend, so I'm 50, and we've got a lifelong friend who, who actually uh, is a friend of my parents, but they met my parents through my nan. He got sent home end of life, and he'd been home a couple of days, uh, and I'd been sending healing out. And it was really interesting because I said to my mum, something significant is going to happen Thursday week. I've just had that message Thursday week. Because when I sent him some, some kahuna healing, I, I picked up an ailment on him. But for me, when I pick up ailments in the body, it comes up as like bright highlighter yellow. So I'm able to kind of know where I'm going, what I'm doing. And that came through as a diagnosis. And, and basically, he passed away that night in his sleep. And that, and that was something given to me very, very, um, very obviously, very strongly. So I've had all of these moments that I didn't understand growing up. But when I look back, I've had a love of martial arts. I've done many different martial arts. Um, I've always known that I didn't fit in. And it's because I'm kind of not meant to be in the, what I want to say is the mainstream. I, I know that the difference with me is because I've always known that I had a different path to follow. There was no not fitting in. It was just that I knew that I, I didn't or I wasn't in harmony and vibrationally aligned with what everybody does. And so therefore, when I went my way, it, it feels good. So, for example, if I thought, you know what, I'm going to be lazy tonight. Stuff, Keith, I can't be bothered. I'm just I'm not even going to send him a message. You know, if I, if I did that and my soul knows that this is absolutely something to do, even if it's just to make your acquaintance, or whether we end up as, as, as YouTube magical hosts doing something wonderfully spiritual together. Do you know what? I know I would have been as flat as a pancake. I'd have been like flat Coke. Because as soon as, as, soon as I, um, I lay on the bed, and before I work or do anything, I, I call it a prayer so that most people get it. And as I call the humans, I call them my physical friends, uh, yeah. rather than non-physical. <laughs> So all the physical friends get it. It's also more polite than lemmings, right? <laughs> and um, so I always do it. But what I do is I align. And it's just a process that I follow, that I've created through many different influences, particularly more latterly with Abraham and Esther Hicks. And I always give credit to people and where I've got that effectively ripple out benefit from. It's really important, even when I do my own shows on, uh, on Facebook Lives and whatnot, because... You know, I, I just get totally jazzed. And, uh, and, you know, it's so strong now that I can, I can just close my eyes and poof, I'm in what they call the vortex. And what I do is, if I've had a bad day or I've had some energetic wobbles or some perhaps more waves and ripples in my pond, because we still go through the human experience. Right. And our emotional guidance system still lets us know whether we like something, whether we don't, whether it's for us or not in terms of boundary setting to keep our attention where we need to be so we don't wander off and you know we keep in the vortex uh, energetically charged and aligned and at one with what we wish to be so we manifest that effectively i lay on the bed and if i've had a wobbly day i just go where am i and i just get this like raining feeling i get this it goes through me and i go there i am and as soon as i affirm that it goes and then i go i am here now so that's the link if you like celestially or divinely or whatever you want to call it for me i call it a divine source infinite creator uh, i don't have a label for it you know i love the old saying that says beliefs are just thoughts you continue to think when people ask me how i work as a medium 
they say, and I say, I have absolutely no idea. And I love the people that really explain it down to the nth degree. It's because there's Archangel Gabriel or Metatron and you think, really? Okay. For me, there's just, I just, if I open myself without any restriction, even if it's a divine label, I, I just get this fumph and I, I just feel like I get this energetic surcharge surplus of energy that comes through me that says, yeah, you've got this, you're on track. In the same way that my emotional guidance system on the other side of the coin lets me know that I'm not meant to be there, that's not for me. And you know, where a lot of people don't get that is, so supposing you went on a date with somebody and you were unsure, well, you kind of know, it, it's just, you know, it's your, your mind in an, in an unconscious conscious state or even in an unconscious unconscious state that, that you either try to override what you know is or isn't for you and then it kind of all goes upside down but you feel that not in your stomach because you know your system saying to you what ain't you getting yeah let me put a nice knot in your stomach make you feel like you don't want to eat or you're going to be sick you know you getting it yet no oh my gosh you know come on you know what's wrong with you slap slap so yeah. i call it a psychic slap and, and, you know, we just need we just need to rely on that and go with it. So I say, I don't know. I surrender. And the more I've surrendered recently in the last two weeks, my mediumship has changed in terms of the names, the communication that's come through, the depth of them, the accuracy. When you just mention a name, whether they're alive um, in the physical sense or, or they're non-physical, that they've departed. It, it's all there. Incredible detail. And a friend of mine said to me last night, I can't believe how your mediumship has changed in 18 months. And I, and I, and I said, I don't know that it has. All, all I know is I've made more space. So wow. I've increased my bandwidth to be able to receive more um, without any label. And, and that's it. But I, I get now totally jazzed like that. It's incredible. Wow, that's interesting. It's, that, that was a whole interesting thing. Because as you were talking, I was thinking in my head a couple questions. And as I was thinking them, you, you were answering them already. I was like, <laughs> ask me about the experience of what you go through when you're... When yeah. You're so interesting. So do you see... Do you see, uh, like, are you clairvoyant as well? Or do you see energy and stuff? Like, uh, I, I do, I do, I do everything. I, you know, I, mean, I can see your aura as I, as I look past you. I can see your head's doing that at the moment. You can probably see mine doing that, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I can feel that. And, and I can actually, it's a bit like, um, it's, it's almost a bit like clear audience. It can come as either um, like a, a thought of hearing or it can come as like a, a voice, a spoken thought. Yeah. And, and I distinguish that from, you know, I can hear people go, hey, Ian, in the middle of the night and talk to me. As clear as you and I are speaking now, it's nuts. But, but there it is. So I, I get all the clairs. But what I find is it's a bit like when somebody said to me um, recently, do you believe in elementals? You know, do you believe in, in the angels? And I said, um, I, I don't, I don't, um, I don't bookmark those as any inspiring source around me as a separate inspirer or source to it. Consciousness. I said, because I know that in the gym in my time, one day I was training and it was at the end of my Thai boxing and uh, I, I just trained on the bags, punching and kicking. And Genghis Khan's energy just came in. And I know I can call that in and it was over me. So it wasn't a trance-like state. It was deeper. It was, it was probably more overshadowing in terms of its depth and its effect. And one of my friends walked past me and said hello to me, was having a chat. And of course, I completely blanked him. And all I remember afterwards is coming back round like this, going, where am I? And I looked down at my hands. I'd taken all the skin off my hands. The blood was dripping down my hands because I, I wasn't there. People were giving me funny looks because I must have been given this bag what for. Yeah. And I went to speak to my friend Luke and I said, you're all right, Lukey. And he went, I'm not talking to you. You ignored me. But I had no recollection. None. Interesting. So I, I get absolutely everything. And at the moment, I'm doing some work with King's College London where they're actually uh, holding interviews with mediums to ask them some questions. And then when we come out of COVID or, or it's more relaxed, either or, they're going to take us in and analyse our brains with the skull cap. Oh, wow. Um, that's so that, to hear yeah, that, that, opp that, that opportunity. Yeah, well, that opportunity found me, and they paid me. They paid me forty-five pounds sterling to do this survey. I would have paid them forty-five pounds to. <laughs> yeah. You know, 
because you know they haven't got interestingly they've got parapsychologists psychologists they've got um all sorts of different experts on the panel they've got the one of the girls that interviewed me was a, a had a doctorate in theology and another girl um, in psychology and the interesting thing was they've got nobody spiritual there so I, i'm i'm thinking i kind of i kind of want to be there because psychology is supposed to be study of the soul but it, it's really kind of not interesting yeah so how'd you learn to to trust the information that you're kind of uh, absorbing or um, connecting with because like I've, I've had experiences especially when I was kind of having my awakening and I just started thinking about life and all this. And I was, I felt like I was in another dimension a lot of the times and just a yeah. channeling information. And I was like, I, it felt like a knowing, but how do you know to like trust it? Is this real? Is this not? Because later down the road, I, I look back and I was like a lot of the information, I had a perception of it. And then it changed yeah. time. you don't know not to trust it because I, I do believe that in that pure, you have to have surrendered to be at one with it. And so therefore, if you are consciousness, because you've just relaxed and I'll share a poem with you briefly in a minute, it's a brief poem that, that I got channeled and it, and it will explain a lot. But in that increasing of the bandwidth or what I'd say is imagine I'm like an egg in the albumen, you know, so I'm in like a little sack. And, and I just allow that membrane to dissolve. So I, I effectively just become at one with the room. So I then at that point don't know that I am that consciousness or I'm not that consciousness. I just am. And so therefore the experience I get in that state is my, I don't like the word truth, but let's call it truth in the sense that I wouldn't know not to pass on or work with what I've got any more than I would want to be wary of it or in fear of it. It, it just is. As, as sure as when I get up and my soul looks through my eyes in the morning, there's a bald middle-aged fella in the mirror looking back to me that hasn't got any hair. It's just as, as sure as that. So all I'm doing is effectively at one with my being, which is at one with source, where I am truly being, so capital B, capital E, I-N-G, me, my soul. So I, I, it's a bit like knowing that you've got nobody around you and you're almost free to do what you want. You know, parents have gone or whatever the case may be. And, and as a kid, you can just do what you want to do. So, you know, that information almost just comes, if you imagine it comes through my back and out through my front, it's almost like, like it passes through me and it, it feels right. I see. You know? wow. So it's like your soul is living in that, in that energy. Yeah. And then your yeah. brain and your mind is interpreting it as being a physical being. I see. Yeah. This, um, this poem is, um, I use it in my own development classes because I do it at my own show on um, Facebook. And this got channeled to me. And this is, this is um, some people call it synchronicity, serendipity or whatever. And um, I found it really interesting. I was listening to a song on the radio and one line of lyric was one step closer. And something just went like drums in a rock band, went boom de boom de boom ting mm -hmm. I just got this. So can I just try something with you quickly? Yeah. May I, may I invite you just to close your eyes? Yeah. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to give you a little experience of what it's like to experience what I get as a medium right now. So just, if I may trouble you just to breathe in and out, just, I want you to relax yourself. I just want you just to feel your energy and be aware of the energy within you. And if you can feel any spots that feel lighter or heavier, say around your main chakras or something like that, just notice those. And if you do have those, focus yourself into the light of the light area and just imagine yourself radiate, radiating that out through your body to the point that it effectively passes through and dissolves the darkness as you begin to feel a little lighter. And just breathe in and breathe out that sort of euphoric feeling of being at one and feeling fabulous, fantastic, and already. Now, I'm going to invite you in your mind's eye to visualize someone who has passed in heaven, spirit, whatever it is for you. I just want you to visualize them in your mind's eye. And just nod your head for me when you can almost feel the energy in your body change when that becomes a real connection for you. 
keeping your eyes shut. Just nod your head when you can almost feel it. Perfect. Now, I'm going to take you through this poem. I'm going to do it twice. I know you are here. You never went far. I feel my love for you, all that you are. I expand my senses. Now you can come back in. Our love rejoins together that special place deep within. My heart, my mind, my body, my soul. As you move one step closer, I regain my whole. I knew you'd never leave me, abandoned, all alone. Here on the earth plane, the place I used to call home. Say that one more time. I know you are here, you never went far. I feel my love for you, all that you are. I expand my senses, now you can come back in. Our love rejoins together that special place deep within. My heart, my mind, my body, my soul. As you move one step closer, I regain my whole. I knew you'd never leave me, abandoned, all alone. Here on the earth plane, the place I used to call home. And just with your eyes still closed, linked to your loved one, I just want you to focus on one thing that becomes clear for you, a strong emotion, or whether you hear anything, feel anything, or anything that will connect you with that person. Okay, and I'm just gonna give you that for a few seconds. I'll count back from 10, 9, 8, 7, Six, five, four, three, two, one. I'm going to invite you to wiggle your fingers and toes. Just move your body slightly. And when you're open, just open your eyes gently. You'll have a soft gaze. Just allow your eyes to settle back in the room. Did you almost feel like the quantum leap type of effect as you came back? So what type of effect? Like a quantum leap type of effect. Like you came from somewhere else back into the room quite literally. Yeah, and uh, especially as I went went into it, I felt like an immediate, like I'm now in something else, in the connection. Yeah. And when you asked, um, it was to, did you say someone dead or alive to think of? Was so it someone passed. That passed, okay. Because when you said that, I had an immediate image. I don't know if it was a premonition or something, but my, the first person that came to mind is still alive, but she's old. And, and I don't know okay. what happened. So I don't know if, what that can but that, No, that's fine because... You know, it's like um, uh, a stroke victim or somebody that's been struck by lightning is a classic, you know, that are kind of here, kind of not, or anybody with an Alzheimer's condition, you know, you can pick up on their energy or somewhere deep within you if you know that they are, forgive me, vulnerable, perhaps, or, or more at the end of life or something like this. I don't want to distress you, but you tend to hone in on that stronger. It's like nature knows how to love who needs love. And so your soul will find their soul is my humble feeling. Um, but equally, you can still connect to energy of living people. People say that mediums connect with the dead, per se. I say, no, mediums connect, full stop. Because, you know, I know that if I don't want to go near that person, I don't know what it is, but that doesn't feel good for me. Two things, right? I don't want to go and find out and go through the experience. So a lot of people go through relationships because they want to, they want to stay and work at the relationship where they know it's not where their kind of their heart, aka their soul, is. It's like for whatever the reason, that experience has now moved through them, beyond them, or they've transcended it, transmuted it, whatever, whatever the case may be. In the same, in the same vein, you can feel that from the living that way, and you can still connect to it. I could read I could read you that way too. So, you know, it it, it depends, but normally when you're when you're working. You know, we are quite humbly uh, subservient to whatever it is that can create a planet spinning in the middle of space with water on faces that doesn't fall off. Well, has someone ever asked you what happens after death? Yeah, you, you, you get it. You get it all the time. But, you, you know, I, you, you don't ever die. That's for me. That's the point, because, you know, all I would say is it's like a dimension of consciousness for me. And so I've almost... Um, in terms of karmic obligations of the soul, you know, people often confuse karma with the will of a righteous retribution upon another so that they suffer to the extent that you judge them for that they should incur something that's not pleasant to accord with the wrong that you deemed that they've done to you. That's not what karma is. That's why you see those words, karma's a bitch. Karma's not a bitch. That right. means 
it's kind of, you know, it's, that's like casting a spell on somebody in hocus pocus speak. You know, um, it, it is it is that, you know, I've got things that I know I need to unblock. And when I connect and do that connection, you know, where am I, there I am, I am here now. I know that my emotional guidance system, what it does for me is it lets me know almost when I stray so far from where I need to be. I use it as like parking sensors. So you go beep, 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 watch out for the hazard, come back online. And when I align like that, it, it's a very different experience. I don't actually go anywhere. I just go back to source. But the the living, because there's no life. For me, I say life is what you write on the book when you finished it and you, you, you're a discarnate spirit mm. and you call that, ex, that set of experiences life. L living is experiencing your experiences. So experiencing them as a human, if I can use that word, is, um, is just one dimension of my soul which is the consciousness that I'm experiencing my experiences with, which is very basic. And I make crazy mistakes when I go off path, hence the weight guy bit, because that pulls you back on like the parking sensors. Because a lot of people don't hear their parking sensors or choose not to listen to them. So I'm kind of the bridge between the two as a way guide to help them get back on path so that they can full and complete what they came here to do share it with others as christy marie sheldon says so we can all get better together for the good and great of everyone yeah wow. a purpose you don't know what your purpose is but i don't believe you're meant to know you're just meant to know that you're going the right way because in your experiences as a creator you know and a co-creator if you didn't have some license to add in your your magic well we'd all be drinking the same drinks using the same phones you know wearing the same we'd never have evolved we'd still be running around eating uncooked meat you know? Yeah, yeah. So we've, got to, we've got to contribute. So it's my shot to know that somebody's got my back and we'll call that consciousness. And I've got to go and a chance to have a go at making my contribution and shining out as almost an earth angel, somebody that can run around in the physical to kind of not spread the word, but to guide everybody back home. Because when we're separate, you know, we're not as powerful as when we're together. So I always say, like, like a, a shepherd, you herd your flock. And there's a very difference there because community brings unity. Even if you observe a set of sheep, even though they're afraid of the sheepdog, what do the sheep do? They, on their own, will come together. They don't actually, if you, if you observe um, this in the fields, the sheep will nine times out of 10 know that they're vulnerable and come together and their community creates unity. You know, and they almost shield the ones that fall down or they come around them as like a form of protection. The dog is almost um, dispensable to, to some extent. And, it, and it's, it's kind of like that. So I'm, I'm able to create what I want to do, knowing that somebody's got me and make my contribution. Because, you know, without Steve Jobs and all of these people, you know, it would be a very different experience. Which is, so do you believe in um, reincarnation? Um, not, not that way. I, I, I just feel that a soul is eternal. And, and um, my, my energy just um, really um, continues however it needs to, to continue. Yeah. Because when you get that image in your head that you had, albeit of a living person, and if you watch the replay of this and practice that exercise, um, and I don't mean that to be rude, but let me say just repeat that exercise and do it with, say, a grandparent or somebody like this, maybe a friend or, or, or whatever, you know, you can actually connect. And when you can see somebody almost like they're in your face. So I saw my nan once, I could see every wrinkle and almost feel her breath. It wasn't a dream, it was stronger. I call that a spirit visitation. So that's the connection. And that experience is as near as I can give anybody in a very quick moment, what a medium gets. And how you are literally, you know, I, I took you out of this world, I didn't. I, I, you guided you out with a little bit of assistance from me. But what was that? You know, you were out probably within five minutes. Yeah. So none of this opening up, closing down BS that I say, you know, I don't disrespect what people choose to believe, but it is a choice to believe. Right. You know, that would be almost insulting to this divine source, in my humble opinion, that you can turn it on and off. It's like, really? I, yeah. I think it's the other way around. I said, so what, what reason would people usually come to a spiritual medium for? I mean, what kind of struggles are they dealing with that makes them want to 
reach out to you? All sorts. You know, people, people are unconscious. You know, they want to know if they've had a night of passion with someone they've seen a couple of times. Is he coming back to me? When will I win the lottery? The usual questions. I kid you not. You know, you do, you do get it. When I worked for Psychic Today uh, on Sky, you know, we had a lot of that. And we, we had a minute to answer these questions, either through, we had to work psychically, but I'm sure not everybody did. They were working mediumistically. Um, or if you were using tarot cards, so I did everything, um, you know, giving them an answer to those questions. But that's unconsciousness. And actually, I don't work so well when I work with people like that because I know I'm destined to do other things. So I need to work with more consciously awake or awakening or fully awake souls. And... Um, People come to you because I would suggest that they're drawn to you because whatever it is that they need will find its way through them through the strongest link. And so this synchronistic magic that people say happen isn't out of the blue, as, as Abraham says with Esther Hicks, it's out of the oblivious. Because I, I always say to people, how did you find me? I don't know, I was drawn to you. Where, where, where did you look to find me? On Facebook. Well, there's thousands of mediums on Facebook all over the world. What, 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 why, why me? I don't know. There's something about you. And so what I say is, is, is that it knows what it's doing to get the, the job done so that the message of what needs to be received or why it needs to be received is gotten by those that need to get it. And even, even in a den last night, I, I did this I did this. I, I'm a little so and so because I'm all for pushing the boundaries. So I don't just do straight messages. I do crazy things. Like I will say to somebody, close your eyes. So this will be in a dem. I've, I've done this live. I'll, I'll say, hold the image like you did of someone that you want to connect with or something that's going on around you. And I get them to acknowledge it and connect with it because what they don't know that I'm doing with them is I'm getting them to align in terms of manifesting true alignment, not sitting there like that hoping a Ferrari will appear on the drive. I'm getting them to truly align with it to be it so they can manifest it. And when they've got that energy and they know that they're connected with it, I, I, they've got a piece of paper and I say, screw that into a ball, thinking of everything that you're thinking about. And they do that and they come back in the room. I bring them back and just say, you know, open your eyes. There'll be a soft gaze, allow your eyes to settle. And now throw that piece of paper at me, that ball of paper. And there might be 30, 40 people when you do this. And so, because I don't want anybody else to touch it, I want their energy in the paper. And what I do is, psychometrically, I, I read that. I then get a psychic connection and then a mediumistic connection. And that goes into a full-blown reading. And um, that nine times out of ten, I've only had a couple of failures in my time. We don't know what those failures are, whether they're mind blocks with the people or what. We'll never know. But nine times out of ten, it works. And what happened one day was something to do with a woman with a son with football boots. And she just went, oh my gosh, or words to that effect, because she was blown away. But what I said is, is that is the same process of you feeling like something needs to be done or getting a hunch, having the thought, stroke prayer, that you then effectively project out and ask for the answer for. And I say, have you had the answer to that yet? No. But they say, thank you for getting it now. And I say, but that's the point that you're not getting. You don't need me to get the answer. What I'm showing you is, is the answer is always there. So it's not out of the blue, it's out of the oblivious. Um, but if you can increase your capacity to receive it, you'll, you'll, you'll get it, however it manifests for you, and you'll refine it over time as you become more aware of it. Hmm. But I actually suggest that nobody needs a medium to give them a message. Yeah. I'm just like a catalyst I to see. get the process going. Yeah people just naturally find you and it's just that meant to be that you're supposed to pass on this message. You're the connection. Yeah. I see. Have you ever, do you know much about astro travel? Yeah. So, so have you ever had anybody come to you and having struggles with astro travel like where they come out of their body and their sleep and stuff like that? And yeah, I, I do. And what I, what I, what I find there is that they're, they're trying to get a definition of, an experience into something that they can then intellectualize and then understand so that they can define it as to what it is. And what I say to them is, what did you experience when you were, you were, you were on your trip? 
So for me, I fly with my dad's mum, my, my, my paternal grandmother, um, a lot. And um, I, I, all I know is I get these experiences and I describe the experiences. And so when I say to them, with those experiences, would they relate or connect with you in some way or on some level with your living experiences now? Maybe troubles with your son, your daughter, your husband, dog, whatever it is, work, lovers, who knows? You know, does that make sense in terms of either your approach, your connection, or seeing things from a different perspective? And an awful lot of the time, that is so. And so it's almost, I would say, like being given the benefit of being an eagle for the day, where you get the bird's eye perspective, but from a connected point of view, so that you are almost going up to your soul as your soul flies to see all so that you can fully embody the feeling because you're at one with the feeling of it. And it's almost like fine tuning in the radio station so that you can hear the music playing rather than it crackling. Yeah. Well, is, is astro, can astro traveling be dangerous? Um, I haven't experienced it as a dangerous experience in my experiences. Okay. If I was to say yes, it would be because people put their mind in place and almost are going, whoa, 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 where am I going? What am I doing and everything else? Rather than just going, oh, oh, you know, um, and, it, and it's almost like that they feel themselves going, you know, like when you go to sleep, sometimes you feel like you're falling, you're falling yeah. off down an elevator shaft or off a cliff. That they, when they sort of have that conscious consciousness of, whoa, and then they go, I don't like this, rather than just enjoying the free fall. Um, and that blocks them. And they say, I'm worried. I didn't like that. And so what they've done is, is they've interrupted the experience. And therefore, that's where the, the danger comes and would give you a bad so, have an opinion. Yeah. So I have a friend that says he experiences a lot of astral travel. He, when he goes in his dreams, he's, he's like yeah. in really real to him, right? So he's traveling all over the world. He says he's died multiple times and he's, he, do, he actually says he doesn't like it. He does. He's try, been trying to figure out how to get help to, to figure out how to stop it or um, whatever can help him. So is that, is that something you've ever worked with or what, what can he do? No, because I've always had really people sort of saying, I didn't like this dream that I had the other night. And when they explain it, it's almost like they're flying through Superman's kingdom, you know, on his own planet full of crystals. And, you know, it's almost so bizarre what they can recall or what they're reminded and what they describe is surreal in terms of anything that you can relate to from a humanistic perspective. And so therefore it isn't something that you can relate to, to, to call. You've got to experience, um, you've got to experience it. And it's one of those things where you just feel. But if you, if you sort of say, oh, I don't like this, or I don't want this feeling, for me, that's the interruption. Because I do feel that if you're not prepared to go on the journey, the journey stops. And so therefore, that, that's the interruption of where you are trying to override the experience. In the same way that we described with that experiment that I've done before, um, that lady, the, the answer was there because what I say to her is without being rude, my darling, you know, if you don't think you can do it, how do you think I've never met you before and I'm coming along giving you some clarity as you see it because she thinks it's me. Um, although she sort of understands I'm getting a communication, um, albeit I've taken it around the houses because I was just sharing experiences. But I just say, how do you think I got it? In the same way when people ring you up and they go, can we do a reading over over skype or zoom or whatever else does it work and i say i could be sitting on the moon in my speedos and i could give you a reading on earth <laughs> think about it yeah right you it's know. not connected right i see yeah. so have you worked with are you able to help someone who who comes out of their body a lot when they're sleeping and things like that yeah yeah but it's more it's more what i find is them understanding that the experiences that they're getting it would be a bit like giving a message as a medium. You know, it's understanding and having the confidence of what you're experiencing and there's, there's a purpose to it. But allowing yourself just to have had the experience and almost surrendering to it and going, okay. Because what happens then effectively with hindsight almost is you find yourself in spaces and places 
quite potentially life-changing or you go off of piste or off of your normal path you go why don't I want to go down the pub with my mates tonight and sink a few beers why do I feel like I want to go to a church or I want to go and serve soup at the homeless shelter and now I'm here it's freezing cold but it feels really good yeah I'm glad to go to the pub and and you know because it doesn't necessarily have to make sense that's the unconsciousness saying what was that what is it how do I define it what do I do with it because what happens is it just plays a part in the same way that you buy a musical CD because it's got your favorite song on it. And all you do is you play that song and then one day you put it on, play that song and you're doing the housework and the album's playing because you're too busy to go downstairs to rewind it or whatever. And you go, oh, I love this track. Wow. In fact, I like that more than the song that I loved. And so in that experience of what you weren't familiar with, you get an experience that then allows you to have an experience off the back of that, which in this instance will probably either motivate you, lift you up, or you wouldn't start feeling like you were hacked off doing this housework. You'd be going, oh yeah, cool. You know, just carry on your dusting, whatever you're doing. And you would, you'd be literally out of your mind, quite literally, because you would be connected to source. You, you would just be happy in your environment, being grateful, um, being fueled by this inspiration, which is taking away the monotony in effect. So you can go about what needs to be done, but it feels good. Even the most mundane of things can feel good, like cleaning the car. I see. Wow. So it's a lot of it. It's like there, there's a reason for going through the experience. It's just a matter of finding the message or the lesson within it. And, and Yes, it's allowing yourself to experience something that's unfamiliar. Because I would suggest that if it didn't come in an offbeat fashion, you're probably awake as in conscious enough albeit it might be on the con the unconscious um end of the spectrum to block it to say i don't like that i don't want that you know and things like that and um you know it would come in a way that in the same way that that message was destined to get to that lady that night about the football boots or if a, 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 like a stillborn baby came through in um a demo I did on, on Facebook a couple of weeks ago uh, and gave me his name. Um, and he just said, my soul saw the earth. And I said to the person, look, this is either a stillborn baby or the baby literally only lasted like a very, very short period of time. And um, so, you know, it, it just had that experience. In that instance, the mother would have had a child, you know, and had the experience of being a mum, albeit very briefly. Um, in, the, in the same way, you can't recreate that connection of that experience that was tragic but it would be no different from you having the tragedy of not having the opportunity to either receive what is here to help you that's trying to get in it's knocking at the door and you're going nobody answers my prayers and it's going lifting the letterbox going open the door i'm here it's cold come in i've got answers for you that will help you so you have to get it out of whack that's my humble view because you've closed yourself off to what's possible through conditioning, through the choice of beliefs that you have, because your choices, um, behaviors and actions that you make and take each moment will create the beliefs that you, you do choose to have. And they're not beliefs that are effectively just passed down from others. You know, you've got to get out of that mindset because I'm 50 years old. I can't blame my mum for something that she did that I say, I'm like this because of that. You, yeah. You've got to, Right. 21st century so we, we in that same that same way where we ask for that awakening how do i turn my life around and maybe through tragedy or something like that the trigger the thing that you asked at the start what got me into this was um off the back of meeting that lady i went to my local spiritualist church within three years i was on platform boom stars aligned magic happened Wow. Yeah. So that's great. So you're saying like, yeah, you have to experience what you're experiencing going through and find the lesson within it, basically. Yeah. Message I see. That's amazing. So how can people find you if they, they want your services? Well, they can find me on, on Facebook. They can look me up as Ian Mason. They can look me up um, at Medium Ian Mason as my Facebook page. My website is www.ianmason.com and Ian is spelled I-A-I-N. Or on Instagram, I'm um, Medium Ian Mason on there. I'm on LinkedIn, as you know, at just under Ian Mason. So you can find me. I I'm, I'm pretty obvious, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Awesome, awesome. 
Cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was a great conversation. So interesting. Fun to talk to. Thank you. I really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. On. Send it to you. Yeah. And, uh, That's great. Listen, you, you take care. Thanks, Keith. Yeah. All the best. Absolutely. Bye. 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 What up? So we just had a conversation with Ian Mason, the spiritual medium, and it was pretty interesting. So I was thinking, I don't know too much about what I think of it. I think, you know, a lot of questions went through my head. I'll tell you that for sure it was really weird how as i was as he was speaking i was thinking in my head certain questions things that i wanted to ask him and like right as they were popping in my head he was basically answering those questions like going right into it like exactly what i was going to ask him one one of them was um he was describing his experience with and spirit and one thing i wanted to ask him what was his experience with um I mean, what's his process of connecting and all that? And he just started explaining what it feels like, all that. So it's exactly what it was in my head. Um, you know, for metaphysics, you know, learning a lot about like psychics, like he's a psychic, it connects with the astral realm um, and that realm, which is, yeah, it's, it's above, you know, the physical plane where we're connected, right? When he's talking about humans and all that, you know, he's referring to the physical plane. Um, he, it, it was, it was really cool. You know, it's an interesting conversation. He's learned to, connect more with the astral realm. we all have a psychic ability a psychic door they call it where we could connect but some people are meant to be within that you know as he is and actually bring in messages and um, information from it to to help people become aware or awaken to it uh, so you know it was, a, it was cool it was a great conversation I um, think what we learned from it mostly is that you got experience this is what I took away from it got experience the experiences that you go through whatever you're experiencing Go through it, accept the experience, be live the experience. As he was saying with his, his soul, like he is within the soul. He's just experiencing his soul, right? Live it and find the lessons within it. Find the messages within it. Learn from it and grow with it. Um, and I think that's what, I'm, what, what I took away most. So anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Comment down below what you think about it. Think about the process. Is, the, is this something you never try out? What you thought of it was? Um, and don't forget to share if you liked it and you resonate with it and learn from it, whatever it is. Don't forget, subscribe, stay tuned for the next episodes. Thanks.